Greetings, I'm Dick Gooding, and I'm the host of Veterans Remember, which is a new program uh, started by HCAM, uh, where we're interviewing and having discussions with a number of veterans here in Hopkinton. Uh, we've got veterans from World War II, we've got veterans from Korea, we've got veterans from Vietnam, and we have veterans from the more recent contacts in, uh, in the Mid-East. And over the uh, upcoming weeks and months, we're going to have conversations uh, with many of those veterans. And uh, we'll hear their stories, we'll learn a little bit about some of their experiences uh, during wartime and peacetime, and a little bit about their roots uh, to Hopkinton. Uh, we think that uh, this is a, a very worthwhile endeavor, and we hope that, the, that your children will have the opportunity to see this, and we would encourage you, if you are aware of any veterans uh, who might be interested in participating, uh, we'd love to hear from you, and you could call HCAM uh, right here in Hopkinton, and uh, they will get in touch with me, and we'll uh, try to bring you on. Uh, this evening, uh, Ray Fair has been uh, uh, is joining us, and uh, Ray and I go back a number of years. His son is a couple of years younger than me. We went to school together, so uh, and uh, Ray was just telling me as we sat down that my stepfather used to make his glasses way back in the, mm -hmm. probably in the 50s, I would say, I would, be, so. would be my guess, Ray. And, uh, you know, uh, but, uh, uh, well, it's a small town and continues to be a small town, and I'm pleased as punch to be uh, participating. Uh, I wonder maybe you could explain to, to the audience and, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, your early years in Hopkins and before you went in the service. Well, I, I was born in uh, 1917, and my father was in Camp Framingham, and I being born kept him out of the trip to Europe. For World War I? World War I. Oh, yep. right now, uh, what was Camp Framingham? Right? At the Musterfield, I see. up where the state police barracks are. Oh, I see. Up, up on now what was Route used, 9. That's true. Probably, true, yeah. probably a small uh, cow path Where that uh, development is, yeah. veterans development. I see. And what did they do at, uh, at that camp? Camp Raymond? Mm -hmm. The same as a staging area. I see. I think it was uh, in the uh, Company M, Milford, mm -hmm. was there. And they were getting ready to ship out for France. I see. And I was born and that saved them. And were you living in Hopkins? Right. Uh, I was, in was we lived in Ashland at the time. I see. And, and when did you move to Hopkins? I moved to Hopkins in 1918 or 1919. Oh, so you were still a young pup at that point. Same place. I see. Same house ever since. Ever since. Now, what, right. uh, Hopkins was a little different back then, I imagine. Much different, yes, it was. Was yeah. it just a few hundred people in town at that time? That's true. Well, yeah. It's changed a lot now, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it has. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, the early days when you decided to join the service and uh, what I that didn't was join, about. I didn't I join. I was working at Lombard's, mm -hmm. and I had several deferments for the work I was doing. And then when I finally got drafted, I was 26, 26 years old when I went in. Mm -hmm. And we left here, went to Devons. I see. And what year was that, Ray? 1942. So it was in, still in the early stages of the yes, war. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And you, and you did your training up at Fort Devons? No, we left there for uh, Just Oklahoma. Oh, out where, Fort Sill? Camp Gruber. Camp Ruba? Camp Gruber. Gruber, yep. okay, I'm not familiar that's with that where all the, That's where all the, the gangsters used to hang out. All the what? Gangsters. All the gangsters. Pretty Boy Floyd and so forth. Oh, is that right? Yeah. 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 So what, what branch? That's a 20 miles out of Tulsa. Oh, I see. I see. I don't imagine that's there anymore, is it? Camp Ruba? I never hear of it, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Now, were there other, other uh, guys in, in school with you that, that uh, came no. in at the same time? No. 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 And it was drafted with a group of Framingham fellows mm -hmm. and some from Hopkinton. Some from Hopkinton? Paul Brown. Sure. Guy De Stefano, Frankie Tedeschi. Okay. We're all at the same time. Sure. 
Now, your your brother, you have a brother who served in the in the service. He too? was yes, he was in the Marines, twenty three years. Twenty three years. Wow. Uh, I took it out <laughs> when <laughs> when he joined. We went in the in the camera to see Alfie Karen. Mm -hmm. He was leaving. We figured he was leaving the country, but he was only going to Connecticut. I see. And my brother had tried to get in the Navy and was can't colorblind. Oh, is that right? And they turned him down. So he told the or Karen in, at the Charlestown that he'd get in, but he was colorblind. Well, we'll take care of that. So <laughs> within five minutes, come back next day. <laughs> Bring your bag. Suddenly he wasn't colorblind That's gone. anymore. <laughs> That's gone. He's been ever since. Oh, and, he, and he spent his uh, 23 oh. years in the Marines? 23 years, yeah. yeah. He, hmm. he ended up a sergeant major. Yeah. Well, after uh, so did he go off at the same time you went off? Oh no, no. He was, he was. Uh, he went in right after, right after school, or thirty six, no thirty. Let's see, what time? Did he time? I don't know when it was. Oh, so it was before the war started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Now, uh, when you did after you did your training out in Oklahoma, uh, where did you go from there? We went to Louisiana. Mm -hmm. This was a cattery from the uh, Milwaukee National Guard. I see. They were all went into the field artillery. Mm -hmm. Each group, uh, I had a cousin up in Devons, and I asked for quartermaster, mm -hmm. but he said, no, we'll take care of you. We'll put you in heavy, heavier artillery. You'll be way back at the lines. So everybody happened that everybody that went in that day or uh, landed at Devons were all put in the cattle, uh, in the artillery. artillery. Mm -hmm. We all went to Oklahoma. Well, I was uh, I was in the artillery myself. Really? Yes. Yeah. So I well, and I spent a little time in Oklahoma, but it, it's called Fort Sill now. Fort it's Sill, probably, yeah. Arkansas. Now Fort Sill's in uh, in in uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And that's the home of the field artillery now. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, where did you go from uh, from Oklahoma? From after, there, or I mean, after Louisiana, after your training, to New Jersey, mm -hmm. Camp Kilmer, mm -hmm. and we left there for Europe. Of course, we didn't know where we were going until we got through the Strait of Gibraltar. Is that right? And then we knew we we're close. You went through the Straits of Gibraltar, so did you go to... Well, that's, yep, sure. Did you go to North Africa? Land in Africa. I see. Oran. What, what year was that? 43. 1943. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... And, uh, and we, our guns hadn't come in. The, the war in Africa was over, and our guns would never showed up. So we're there. In Africa, we were guarding prisoners. Oh, is that right? For something to do. So that must have been Italian what, prisoners. Italian prisoners. Uh huh. Uh, uh -huh. So what? When did your guns ever show up? We get to Italy. Oh, I see. That was later on. So you you were in North Africa uh, for how long? A year oh, or so? Six months? No, no, no. Uh, probably six or five or six months. And then you went to Italy. And then we went to Italy. Yeah. Tell us about that. Bypass Sicily. Mm-hmm. Went to Italy, landed in Naples. I see. And uh, uh, what what, and they, what kind of a unit was your heavy artillery? 155 rifles. 155 long milli millimeter long toms. Long toms, yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, were, was your unit involved in supporting the infantry and and? Oh, uh, we were we su we were artillery uh, field artillery for the uh, Fifth Army. We weren't associated with any division, mm -hmm. but we went wherever they called mm -hmm. for artillery. We were there. So where where did you go while all you were in Italy? From Naples, all the way up to uh, well, they finished. I, I left the outfit in '44. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. September 44, I left the outfit because of bad back. Mm -hmm. And I came down to uh, Naples. And we went up through uh, 
casino. We spent four months at casino, five months at casino. And I was a lineman for the outfit. Now, was your unit involved with with fighting the Italians, or were you, were you fighting no, the Germans? The Italians had given up. They had given up. This at was that all point? Germans. They this were all Germans at that point. Yeah, this was the. Well, let's see. The uh, they started from Naples, mm -hmm. and the Italian army had given up. Mm -hmm. That's when Mussolini got killed up in Florence. Oh, I see. Hmm. So. Uh, uh, when did you come home from uh, from Europe, right? Oh, 1945. 1945? 1945. After, I, after uh, VE Day? Well, we were going to Japan. Oh, you were? We were going, and the war ended in Japan, so we came into Boston. Oh, that's a much better assignment yes, than going was. to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> sure was. I understand that you were involved with uh, uh, some sort of a shelling that was uh, one of the largest shellings of the war. Maybe yeah. you could tell us something about that. Well, the casino, the uh, I offered the battalion fired forty-five thousand rounds. Forty-five thousand. I, I have a book. Yeah. I have a book, and each day they fired. They had five hundred and ten days combat. And excuse me, the uh, the big battle that was at the casino. At the right. casino was they caught uh, the German troops going out of up Astoria, and there was only one road out, mm -hmm. and they got the first first road in, first trucks in, blocking the area, and that's it. Then the that's when they. Uh, Big battle started for that. Right, that was a that was one of and the big battles the, of the Italy. And that was the fifth army it? moved mm -hmm. before Casino, and after they bombed it, the fifth army moved up to Anzio. Oh, is that right? And we stayed. The eighth army moved in. The British eighth army moved in where we were. Mm -hmm. We stayed with them, supported them, and the free French. And uh, the monastery was taken in May. Forty-four. Yeah. Hmm. I understand uh, that you were uh, uh, on the picture of Life magazine. Is yes. That, why don't you tell, tell well, people she, about uh, that? I think that would be very interesting. For we had. Uh, I was on CQ one night. What's that? Charge of quarters. Charge of quarters. And this uh, Margaret Burke White were taking pictures for the Life magazine, and she wanted pictures of the artillery. Mm-hmm. So the general uh, wheel sent her up to a battery, my battery, mm -hmm. and she came in at about 11.30 at night. And the officers had a conference and they didn't want to wake up the cannoneers because they were firing all day. So they said, you might as well go down and help them out. So there were four, five of us went down and loaded, loaded the gun Mm -hmm. One gun and fired it, and, and while she was taking pictures. And I have a Life magazine home. Wow. Well, is that in, in 1945? Is that when? No, it came out in 44, 44? I think. 44. Yeah. And you still have a copy of that? I have the Life magazine, yeah. Oh, boy. And there was a list of, it was infantry and artillery in Italy. Mm -hmm. So I brought the pictures into, I brought the magazine into Telecron. Mm -hmm. And they showed some of the people we worked with. One of the girls said, oh, there's my boyfriend. No, really? You know, Infantry walking up the highway, Highway 6. In the same, in, in the same, the uh, same shoot, article the same, in, the, in the magazine. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, after the war and you came back to Boston, uh, did you immediately leave the service at oh, that point? Oh, I went to, uh, uh, we went to Miles Standish. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to go to Camp Campbell. And when I got up to Devons from Miles Standish, got up to Devons, they said, you're not going anywhere, you're going home. Oh, this is when so you first my, thought you were going to Japan? All my personal, no, no. Japan had quit. Okay. That's why we came into Boston. 
So all this stuff I had saved, salvaged out of Italy, gone. Gone. I never saw it since. Oh, what did they do? Send it to, to Fort Campbell? Send it to Campbell, and no, I get nothing. I <laughs> come out of there with so all the, the clothes I wore, that was it. The people in Kentucky got a hold of that. Some of the friends, my friends. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some from Fr Hopkins and yeah. Framingham. Framingham, uh, that fellow that walked around, used to walk around Framingham, down Colvinville. I'm not Lupus. sure. Oh, no. He used to walk, he's still walking, he's yeah. still alive. But he was in a headquarters outfit. Mm -hmm. And Guy De Stefano was in a headquarters. He was in a artillery unit mm -hmm. also. But a different he was in a howitzer outfit. Yeah. And Paul Brown was uh captain of a Quartermaster Corps. Is that right? Quartermaster yeah. Group. And I met him in France. I so saw after you got out of the, the service, then uh, you came back to Hopkinton. Back to Hopkinton, sure. And yeah. uh, uh, tell us a little bit about back about that. Were you married at the time, or did you oh, get married? I was married, but mm -hmm. my wife passed away in 49. I see. As Raymond's wife, mother. Mm -hmm. and then they was married again. Now you have a lot of family, uh, and you're related to a lot of other people who uh, well, yes. people might recognize. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Well, who? Uh, well, I have. Uh, there were six of us in the family, mm -hmm. and two of them passed away. And it's, it's still Helen. Virginia is still in Florida. Mm -hmm. Helen is in town. Yeah. And Helen, Helen Katie, you're talking about. Helen, Helen Katie, yeah. Yeah. And Kay Bowman. Yeah. She passed away. And that's it. This is uh, my brother in California. Mm -hmm. Now you, uh, uh, you worked at Telecron. I worked at Tele. I worked in Lombard when I got mm -hmm. out of service. Yeah. And they had a layoff after the uh, steel strike. I was on the third shift. And that, naturally, they didn't have room for anybody coming back. So they kept me six months, and I was laid off. And then, then I went in business with myself, paint and paper and so forth. And uh, back one on the bum, and my friend sold all the, all the equipment. Is that right? <laughs> and he moved to Bellingham. He passed away. He went to work with Raper mm -hmm. Corporation. Now I went to work for uh, uh, Telecron and then Fenwall. Oh, is that right? Quite sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, boy, a lot of a lot of people from town worked at both both places. Yes, uh, yes. As I recall, and the chemical also. I worked there and. Uh, 30, 38, 39, mm -hmm. and I went to Marble Vocational School. I see. And then I went back to Lombard. Yeah. Did you ever wish you'd stayed in the service, Ray? No. No, not at all? I couldn't. I had a bad back. Oh, I see. Yeah. I still have it. Yeah. And after I got out, I was in Cushing. Well, now that you're 91 years old, I guess you've le learned to live with your bad well, back pretty yeah, well. Oh, yeah, I live with it. I don't do nothing anyway. <laughs> Too old, too old to work. Too old to work, huh? That's true. Uh, do, do, you, do you reflect back on your on the days in the service and oh, there do, was some do you ever run into people that you that you knew in the service? I ran it. No, I ran into uh, Guy Stefano over there. Mm -hmm. or he would he was I knew, I would lay a line on Highway Six, and I said, well, I seen the sign, I knew it was his outfit. So I went over and inquired, and I'm sure there he was, digging a foxhole. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> digging a foxhole. <laughs> digging a foxhole. And I met Paul Brown at, uh, at a staging area. He wanted me to go visit him, but it was too late then. Yeah. The war ended. The war ended. So he's had to leave. Yeah. Then I met him up at Devon's. Paul Brown, he was, he was on the same uh, same trip we were supposed to be on together, 
But we got on a Navy transport and we got home long before him. We were up in Devons, he came in. He was going home on pass and that was it. Yeah. I got out, excuse me, I got out of there at, uh, I don't know, 95 points, 90 points, I guess. They give you so many points, I don't know how, what it was. Up there, they said, you have to get out. You have to get out. Have to get out. No, I didn't argue with them. You didn't argue. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, this has been an enjoyable uh, exchange, and we've learned a lot about uh, a lot about uh, what you've done. Oh yeah, and I after the I got a book from the from the outfit, mm -hmm. and they have a list of all the activities from Louisiana to the time of the war finished, the war ended in Italy. Every day is the number of shells that were fired. I see. So I keep looking at that once in a while. Do you? Checking it up, yeah. Have you ever gone and to any uh, they were reunions? All national, no. No? They were all National Guard troops. Uh, mm -hmm. All uh, Milwaukee, and they were in seven or eight years before I got in. And they were well acclimated to that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And we were just starting out, it was quite difficult. But they made it all right. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us, uh, with the audience, Ray? No. How about your grandson? Grandson is, is uh, at right present time, he's in the, Los Angeles, and he's uh, uh, fire instructor, firearms instructor. Oh, he's in the service? He's in the Coast Guard. In the Coast Guard? Yes. Oh, yeah. how long has he been in the Coast Guard? Year and a half, yeah. two years. Yeah, that Raymond's son. I see. I don't think I knew, knew Raymond's son, but uh, he's been in the Coast Guard, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, is he uh, is he enjoying his stay in oh, the service? Oh, he likes it very much. Really, very much. Oh, that's great. Oh yes, he was stationed in uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Now he's back, back and forth, for different uh, training periods. I see. Well, listen, uh, I appreciate the time that you've spent with us yeah, tonight. Yeah, it's a nice talk with uh, It's. Uh, Again, uh, uh, I'm Dick Gooding, and uh, we're working on Veterans Remember, and it's an opportunity for you to hear from uh, uh, many of our uh, veterans with, uh, that are located all around town, and uh, they have interesting stories, and uh, uh, we love to give them the opportunity, and we hope that it will form a, a little bit of additional history uh, for the children in town. Uh, we're pleased to have this chance, and uh, again, if there are other people that you're aware of that might be interested in participating, uh, I wish that you'd get a hold of uh, HCAM TV, and uh, we'll have the opportunity to interview them. So I thank you very much, and Ray, yeah, thank you very, very much. Nice, Dick, very nice. Appreciate to talk it. With you. Have a good night.
down on a camel's back They just have to go cause they don't know why So while you fill the streets it's appealing to see you Won't get out the country cause you're bad and free You got a new horizon, it's a fear of my style A melancholy town where we never smile And all I wanna hear is the message beat my dreams They got to kiss me cause I don't get sleep, no When the wind for the sand Take it all